everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Terry if you're new here I really do appreciate you stopping by in today's video I'm very excited to be talking about Disney's cultural exchange program and that is the summer program that I did in 2017 as well as 2019 I am Canadian so you're probably wondering wait how can you work at Walt Disney World and not be from the US well that is what the cultural exchange program as well as the cultural representative programs are for Disney International programs are back. They all of a sudden announced that the CEP, the Cultural Exchange Program, would also be coming back after they announced the CRP, the Cultural Representative Program, was coming back. It was totally unexpected as they at first were saying it would come back in waves and then they brought it back right afterwards, which is so exciting. But that means that applications and interviews and everything are moving quite quickly to get everyone ready to be a cast member this summer 2022. So I'm here specifically to talk to you about Disney's cultural exchange program and how to work for Disney, the interview process, as well as what you need to know about working for Disney in an international program, specifically the cultural exchange program. I have some notes written down here that are just below. So if I do look down, that is why. We're only specifically talking about the CEP. If you're not eligible for the CEP, you may want to look into the CRP, which I will leave a link down below with all the information about that. That is an option for working for Disney for a whole year. But the CEP, which is what we're talking about today, is just a summer job for around three to four months. I believe my program was like three and a half months when I did them. So it's super fun if you want a really amazing summer job experience. So the countries and regions who can participate are Australia, Brazil, Canada, Hong Kong, India, France, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, Thailand, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. Hopefully more will be introduced as things change. I don't know what the list was originally before COVID happened. That is what it is at the moment. Some of the criteria that you need to meet in order to do this J1 summer internship. J1 is just the visa that you'll be under. The requirements are you must speak English fluently. You must be at least 18. You must be receptive to Disney look. Disney look has changed over the, <laughs> over the years, so I will leave a link down below with all the requirements. There will be a link about Disney look and what guidelines you have to meet for that. Mostly just like natural hair color. There's different rules on tattoos and things like that. So definitely check that out. You must be available to work every single day of the week, night and day, overtime and holidays. So you may be working quite a lot of hours, which is good, you get more money. <laughs> you basically have to be available for the whole time the program dates are. Are, which I am not sure what the dates are at the moment. If I do find out those dates, I will leave them on the screen or in the description or both. I'm not applying this year. I am no longer a student, which brings me to my next requirement. You must be a student in a degree issuing college or university. Whether you just graduated, you can apply or whether you're between semesters, but you will have to have completed at least one semester already. So the application process is pretty simple. You will need a resume as well as a cover letter. You'll have to fill out information about yourself. If the application process is the same as when I did it, there are sections where you have to elaborate on your work experience. I think it's previous five jobs and you just have to elaborate on what your responsibilities were and what the job was. And then once you are accepted into the next round, you will have to participate in an in-person or virtual presentation talking about the program, the dates, and what the whole program entails basically and then you move on to an interview. The hourly rate for this year is $14 USD and that brings me to costs to consider. First thing on the list is we had to pay for emergency travel insurance. Whether you're covered already from your parents or what have you, you still have to get their required insurance which is really unfortunate because it is money that you don't necessarily need to spend because you might already be covered. At the time it was was through Lloyd's of London and they had a lesser plan as well as a plan that's like more coverage. So because I was covered, I chose the less expensive one, but it is a good couple hundred dollars. I honestly forget how much I spent for the four months that I was going to be there, but you have to do it from your the first day you're there to the last day that you'll be in the US, whether you're going to travel before your program.
Instagram or not, you have to be covered. The next expense is you will have to live in their designated housing, which is called Flamingo Crossing. They used to have a bunch of different housing options that you could put your preferences in for. And I believe you'll have to do that still for the number of people in the room and things like that. I'm not sure 100% on those details. All I know is I spent, I think it was 112 per week. The rent is per week and it does come out of your paycheck, but I stayed in Vista Way my first year, that was 2017, I think it was 112. I know that it was 120 for four people, the same kind of room in 2019 at Vista Way. And now Flamingo Crossing is quite luxurious and that means quite a bit more expensive. It could be like above $200 a week, but it does come right out of your paycheck. And of course, you also need to consider traveling to and from. There is also a cost for a visa. I believe it was $90 or something. I was actually mistaken. This fee is called the US Sevis fee and it might be only $35, but I totally forgot about the participation fee for the program, which is around $425 USD according to the Yummy Jobs website. So just keep that in mind. There is that extra fee as well as well as a cost to prove your student status. At my school, I had to go into the student register office or whatever it was called. And I think it was like $20 or something to have them officially stamp the document that you're given and sign that you are a student at this institution and you're not lying about that. So that is part of it. Moving on to the roles that you might be able to get. Now, it used to be that you could rate the roles that you prefer before your interview. I did attractions in 2017. I worked at the Haunted Mansion. It was a really amazing experience. I also applied for the program the year after. I got accepted for attractions, but I actually didn't go. I just didn't feel like the program was right for me that year. And then I did the program in 2019 and did quick service food and beverage. I worked at Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe in Magic Kingdom, which is the busiest quick service restaurant sometimes in the whole world. So it was a crazy experience. There are definitely different aspects to each role that you as a person might like more depending on the kind of person you are. Those are two of the roles. And then there's character attendant, which is usually saved for the alumni. So if you've done a program before, you're probably more likely to be able to get character attendant. I've heard of some instances where you could do it right at the beginning, but that's just the person who stands with the character performer, which is also a role that you could get. And those would only be for the culture exchange program, fuzzy characters. So no face characters, no princesses, no things like that, but like Mickey, Minnie, Donald Goofy, you could be friends, friends <laughs> with one of those characters. But there is a height requirement you must meet. I think 5'7 was Pluto, which I'm 5'7, and I remember them measuring me in my in-person interview in 2017. They were like, oh, you're perfect height for Pluto. And I thought for sure that I'd get Pluto when they said that. I didn't, obviously. <laughs> I worked attractions. There's also costuming, but there is no guest interaction in that role. You're working with costumes backstage. I knew someone who did costumes who actually got to do it in Hollywood studios backstage. So they worked with like stormtroopers and things like that, which was really cool. So while you don't have guest interaction, they really liked it. So it depends what kind of person you are for what role you might thrive in. Then there's full service food and beverage, which weirdly I feel like this role is new because I don't remember us being qualified for that. And I read some of the description of it and that's taking and filling orders, food prep, cash handling, busing, stocking, etc. So it seems like you're going to be working in a like sit down restaurant kind of situation. I didn't think was a thing before. Uh, there's also housekeeping, which I feel like it wasn't as common before to get that role, but it is an option. Lifeguard as well. You do need to meet requirements, meaning to be able to swim to a certain degree and they do test you on that once you get there. There's merchandise, recreation attractions, which is basically, you could be working poolside at a resort doing like activities with kids and things like that, working slides, or working at the water parks, working the slides and things like that. I had a bunch of friends who did wreck attractions, a Typhoon Lagoon. They really loved it. It's definitely a different experience. You're basically knee deep in water for a lot of your day. So something to consider. And then there's quick service food and beverage, like I said, attractions, like I said, and full service food and beverage cedar. So you'd be working again in a sit down restaurant, but you'd be the host. So those are the roles for the CEP. Now I want to 
dive in a little bit about the interview process. It is different now. I'm not entirely sure if they're doing any in-person interviews. Interviews could really vary depending on who you receive as the recruiter as well as probably your experience. So the first interview that I had in 2017, we did the in-person presentation, learned a bit more about the program, and then you later sat down individually with someone. I remember the first question he asked was, why do you want to work for Disney? And then that was it. That was really the only typical interview question that I was asked. The rest were like, are you comfortable working with chemical like cleaning products? How are you in um, the heat? How are you in like individual roles without like cast members around? They also took my height for character performer possibility. It was a lot of those kind of questions. A lot of them were just yes or no. That was an interesting experience and I was really stressed out after that thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't get in because that's the only question he asked me was why I wanted to work for Disney. My second interview, there were definitely more questions like about my first program, what I liked about it, what were my strengths, weaknesses, more like typical interview questions with a lot of options for how you can answer them. Same with my third one, but a lot of role-based questions like do I see myself being comfortable handling money or if I was up for character attendant, which I did put on my list, and you did get a question about how you would approach a situation where you had to cut off the line. So that's something character attendant has to do. And you have to make it themed because it is important to keep the story alive. When you're working at Disney, it is a show after all. I believe she gave me like a character example that I was working with to make up a story, basically. So things like that, very role-based to see what I could thrive in, maybe aside from attractions, because I just figured I got attractions the past two years, I'd get attractions again. That was basically the interview process for me. Once you get past the interview, there are just stages of documents that you have to get signed, like the student status form that I talked about earlier. There's the housing preferences that you'll probably have to fill out. You have to make sure you pay for your visa and everything like that, and fill out a bunch of other things just so they could get your visa and everything processed prior to going to the US. Aside from that, the summers I spent at Disney, they were some of the best experiences of my life. I met so many amazing people from all around the world. I'm so glad that they're bringing this program back because it truly did change me as a person. I know that's dramatic to say, but like it was quite a wonderful experience, both for my resume, but also just for me as a person. It was truly a dream of mine to work at Disney as well as I'm sure if you're watching this video, it might be yours as well. So if you are from one of those countries and you're interested, there's no harm in applying. Who knows? You could be working and living basically at Disney World for the summer. The other thing that is kind of a concern, if you want to call it, what I've heard from cast members, they're not really getting a lot of opportunity to visit the parks. So one of the benefits of working at Disney is you do get free entrance, but because of the reservation, systems that they have in place due to COVID and keeping numbers in check. They're limiting cast member reservations a bit at various parks and it's tricky to get into the parks to play on your days off, which you do get two days off usually a week. Something I should mention, you know, if you are thinking about it, just, just know that. If you have any questions about the program, please leave them down below in the comments. I will definitely get to answering them. If you've done the program already, if you have tips about the interview process or anything to add, or just want to tell me where you worked, that would be amazing. Leave them in the comments below. I really do appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And please don't forget to like this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.